text-heavy document. A text-heavy document. Um, part of the purpose here is there's a couple of things I need to share with you anyway, and um, going forward, it's to help shape what the purpose of the meeting is, so that we get as much out of it as we can, and we understand going forward um, how we can all contribute. Um, it's really important that uh, it's in red there. Uh, make sure you're able to watch. Uh, first live this coming Tuesday, October 6th, there's going to be a significant announcement that's going to benefit um, all programs. Um, so not just FRC, not just FTC and so on. And I'll leave it at that. Uh, you'll have to join in to uh, benefit from that uh, broadcast. A reminder that the 2056 Inspire Conference is this weekend. A lot of great workshops on there. And uh, Again, the, the purpose of tonight, um, building, you know, curricular archives of sorts, um, sharing with each other and trying to find a way to um, work on developing key aspects. So, for example, Paul and I are working on the uh, SHSM certain training, you know, cert certification and training, six hour activity that we think we're going to be able to offer to teachers so that teachers can get that check mark off any of their kids that are in SHSM. And of course, that's just scratching the surface, as you know, because there's a, a large variety of SHSMs out there and the, a variety of uh, certifications and training and also the um, sector partner experience that um, we're going to look at developing also. So as we go forward, not only would we hope that you contribute to this, but that you will actually benefit from taking resources away and implementing them in the school and then giving more feedback. What does this look like? Did it actually work or not? Um, do Paul and John have any idea what they were doing with the ICT piece and uh, so on going forward? Um, so because of that, um, one of the key areas of focus at the beginning, once we get going tonight, is this uh, the FTC focus. A um, lot of the work that was done this past summer and when you, you take a look even, for example, at VEX, what people have done in their schools in VEX, so how might you take that and adapt it or shift it to the, an FTC model or reflect uh, the FTC experience and then of course FRC but the whole idea of how do we bring this into the classroom so our teams are important of course but also the idea of um, the actual classroom itself uh, you know one of those um, outstanding educational authors um, use that term crafting the container or getting everybody's minds to be focused on the same thing and um, I think for me, what's been important about curriculum is that it's actually meaningful, right? It's connected to something. And sometimes uh, there are those of us, like myself in the past, have been like a maverick and said, oh, look at my stuff. I've got curriculum here. And it's, it, it may be curriculum that serves a certain purpose, an individual activity, um, but maybe it's not been vetted. It's not been um, not connected to expectations, a.k.a. the ministry guidelines and documents. Uh, the idea of what works well in certain scenarios. So a lot of you have already shared some of the good things that you're doing in your classes. So we'd like to hear more about that. Um, and again, the whole idea that it goes back to the um, teaching and learning inside of the classroom and not limited to inside the classroom, but that's partly where or one of our big focuses are here. Um, and it, you know, what could it look like? Uh, Everybody's got different ideas, you know, whether it's individual activities, you have a small unit, a large unit, do they map to expectations or not? Um, do any course outlines exist? So for example, there's um, a couple of rich copies of uh, an IDC course, a grade 12 physics IDC course, um, that is based around robotics. So a lot of good exemplars out there. Um, I know that uh, there's, you know, I typically would create a uh, like a syllabus or a course outline that would be a teacher copy and a student copy and the teacher copy would be the one that's very in depth gives all the resources uh, for the person delivering the course. And then the student copy what would be the abbreviated version that you give out. Again, uh, in looking at resources that have specific connections. So I really like this idea of the SHSM, um, especially in this year alone, when you look at the compulsory um, training and certifications that are out there like first aid, CPR and wellness, you're allowed to substitute those for any electives now. So that's, um, I think, very beneficial. And again, I, I think I've heard from some teachers that um, 
you know, my principal wants me to run this grade nine course and they want it to be exciting and we could deviate from what you typically do for integrated tech and let's do robotics and make that the big focus and how we address those uh, expectations within that robotics flavor, I guess, or emphasis. And then again, um, A&E, if there's any tools that, you know, we all have, um, the goal would be that we're going to create this archive or resource bank that everyone's going to have access to. Um, one of the things that we're all forced to do right now is the, you know, remote delivery. Um, so not all of us, but many of us are affected by that. And we've had to pivot and change how we deliver, whether it's um, rich, how much of your material have you had in electronic format, how much of it is um, connected to videos that it, um, where you, you actually create a blended learning environment where you're adding both the practical of the theory and that you're bringing outside resources in or taking kids out externally via a virtual model. So a lot of changes have happened. And um, I know right now, if, if I was an expert at remote delivery, um, for sure you could go get a job in 50 different school boards right now because they're just scrambling to try to fill that remote learning piece. All right. Um, and then I just wanted to point out a couple of resources. I'm not sure if you know. And when you talk about subject organizations such as uh, STEO or Octi, and Octi's done a ton of work. And you know, when you look at whether work is really how authentic is the curriculum or the curricular activities, um, is it aligned with the Ministry of Education? Did they give their stamp of approval? An example would be an emphasis course, right? And um, or as we talked about in the past, locally developed courses or just a general uh, subject course that's been ministry approved and it's up on their website. Um, I really like the Octi stuff. Um, I've been fortunate to be involved with Octi a fair bit over the years and uh, the resources are, are very rich, I find. So you see here these links, that these are just some examples I pulled just to start to give you something to look at if you haven't been to the Octi site. Um, this, this, uh, any one of these here, and there's, there's virtually a hundred different packages like this on the Octi site, everything from safety all the way through to operation. But what's cool is they have very detailed lesson plans, instructional aid sheets. They've got videos that are embedded in there and they talk about all the important key elements. So it's really, really good stuff. And along with the elementary panel curriculum on our website, First Robotics Canada, um, we did upload um, quite a few of these resources there uh, in coordination with Octi um, so that we could get that into our teachers' hands quicker. Um, and I, I think it's really good stuff. A good example, you know, when you're bringing your kids in to start them on your robotics team and they have no idea what the lathe is. So the introduction of the lathe, the safety behind the lathe, how to do the basic turning, um, drilling a hole on the lathe, same as the milling and squaring up blocks, all of those introductory pieces but that's just the start and that stuff exists. So it's really good stuff. So, uh, and also here under the best practices. So what this is, is, can, I don't know if you could see my screen. Do you see the screen moving? Like, are you looking at my Google folder now? No. Okay. I'm still looking at your still the same document. Okay, so I'll go back to the document then. Um, but anyway, that is a live link and I'll, I'll fire this out to everybody at the end um, where it's just where we could archive. So it's a Google folder that's got other subfolders in it from science, mathematics, uh, technology and engineering and other. So any resources that you have that you want to start sharing, it'd be great if you could put them in there and then they would get transferred and uploaded to the first website. But that would be the first um, holding tank, I guess you could call it. And what I would do, I would ask is if you could, when you do go to that site, if you have something you're going to upload, um, if it's, I, I've got two folders in there called vetted and non-vetted. And vetted just simply means, uh, is it not to the curriculum? Is it actually part of the course that you're teaching kind of thing? And non-vetted is, you know, just some great activity that you do in your course. Um, or some resources that you would use that you could hand to somebody else so that they could use that as a best practice for themselves. Um, I put also up here, you'll see 
this one connected to first programs. Um, this is the, uh, I guess the web page uh, goes to um, Bob Cherry, who was uh, a mentor with 4001, and he's done an extensive amount of curriculum development that's the blended learning version and uh, engaging for the kids. What have you? Some very good examples on there. And um, Bob's going to come in and, and join this group at some point. Uh, I had a good talk with him the other day, so I look forward to contributions by him. So just before we open it up uh, for discussion, this is the next meeting at the bottom, October 15th. And basically, you know, what's going to happen after tonight is a, a continued open invitation for future planning. Hopefully we're going to compile um, the information and get inf your information. So please send me your, your emails and your cell numbers. If you're happy, we could share that out with the other uh, members in this group. And um, please start to upload uh, information. And then if there's a, a group that would like to focus exclusively on FTC, please let us know. And then, because that's going to be the beginning point. We want to try to push that piece forward. Um, when you've got the teachers, like uh, we're saying, with each one of you have described, including Dan Monty and other teachers out there, we're running these different schedules and all boards are different. Um, Dan Monty's doing the whole semester, I believe it is. Um, someone else is doing um, five hours a day, one class um, for so many days, nine days in a row. And that's, they get their total hours that way. So really unique opportunities on how you could deliver the curriculum with um, flexible FTC resources. So that, that's the jumping off point and the goal with where, where we're going. So I wanna open it up now and um, have some discussion about anything to do with uh, curricular pieces. And, um, you know, again, keeping in mind that idea, here, here's something that I do that has worked really, really well. And these links up here, um, in this folder here, I've already uploaded some of the stuff from the past that we usually share out with people, but there are, um, you know, TMM, 4M, TMR, 3M, 4M, uh, very good curricular resources that are there that are actually, um, it's a course, the whole course under the first um, lens, I guess you could say. The other piece too, um, Neil, you were mentioning about wanting to um, do a, I think it was a computer engineering or ICS where you're going to take all the control system components, have another course and try to bring that into that uh, ICS course or ICR maybe. Um, and if you look at the TMR 3M forum course, uh, it's an emphasis course, but the robotics component in there is all in red ink. Why I'm telling you this is you could go in there and pull anything out of that that's in red ink and be able to adapt it to, to your computer engineering or computer science course. Okay, I'm going to pause and ask uh, everyone to start just chiming in. And Paul, do we have... Um, we have a new guest like? with us, John. Oh, excellent. Baron Cosma has just, just joined just as you started to speak, so. <clears throat> excellent. Um, I'm just trying to find where that list is then. Okay. I'm going to go, I'm just trying to find the link where I can see everybody. It's in the participants at the bottom, but perhaps Karen would like to tell us something about uh, her school and what it's been like so far as uh, the other people did when, uh, before she joined us. Sure. Um, okay, I teach in, at an all girls independent school. So there's about, um, there's 230 kids from grade five to grade 12. And in the senior school, there's about 150 kids, girls. Uh, we started uh, an FRC team two years ago. So um, we, were rookie, we were a second year rookie team last year. And I currently have over 65 girls on the team, so half of the senior school. Wow. I, teach, um, I teach grade 11 and 12 physics. Computer science was started in a school about three years ago, so I teach the grade 11 and grade 12 computer science and have been integrating as much compute programming electronics into my physics course as well. Now I have the computer science, so trying to reach out to girls to be encouraged to 
um, apply those skills. I also, um, because it's an all girls school, trying to make computer science not that techy and to be relevant to the girls. And I guess that's the success of the robotics team because I have the largest team in the school and about 50% of the high schools on the team. So it's just that diversity that tech does not have to be math and, and I'm an engineer by background. So tech doesn't have to be only engineering based. So I'm interested in, I just talked to um, one of our directors and we're looking at maybe developing an IDC course at Holy Name. I am also open to bringing as much robotics I can into the physics or the computer science courses that I teach as well. Okay. Excellent. Well, that's a, a great background. I'll tell you, Karen, um, I did mention before you were on, um, I've uploaded into the folder a uh, For You IDC physics course um, mm -hmm. based on robotics. So some good elements in there, including final assessment um, tools in there. So that, that'll be interesting for you just to have a quick look at. Um, and it sounds like you're really off and running. It, it's great to hear of so many girls on the team there. I know. We're, I'm really proud of them. <laughs> I start, when I started a club five years ago, I had two girls. <laughs> so I always talk about that. Did you yeah. say actually what school? It's Holy Name of Mary College. Holy Name. Oh, I, I, yes, I know. No. Wow, that's just fantastic. Paul, Paul knows a lot about your school, right, Paul? No. I, I don't. I know a little bit about Karen. Oh, wait. So is this the one in Oakville? Oh, or? Oh, is, so, John, it's a Catholic thing, right? I know it There's is. So many Catholic schools with the same names. That's why I was very specific when I said we were working with St. John de Brebeuf in Toronto Catholic, because there's one in York Catholic. There's a Brebeuf, I think, probably in Hamilton Catholic. But uh, no, one of the things I know about Karen's school is they have huge lineups of uh, parents trying to get their daughters into that school. It's a very desirable place to go from what I understand. So congratulations to Karen and, and the staff for making it a destination for sure. Yeah, fantastic. My goodness. All right, um, I'm trying to, um, I'm thinking about what's the best way to get kick off this discussion here. And um, so we're not tripping over each other. One thing we could do is in the chat box, if you could just put a comment about something that you, you feel you wanna share. And then that'll help us sort of keep things in order of, um, you know, who, who's doing what or who wants to share which piece. Uh, are any of you um, have been involved in the summer FTC development and then have continued that piece and added any more resources, curricular resources to what you did in the summer? I've, I've uh, so like say with, I, I had a, a funny role just given that I've done FRC for a little bit uh, and then um, found out about this FTC and sort of um, played a funny role of, I guess, being dual sort of mentor, but also rookie uh, individual uh, collectively. And so one thing I sort of say is helping uh, bring a bunch of teams in my board online with it. Uh, while at the same point also learning myself, I do find that, uh, especially uh, as an idea for the new, new teams for FTC, I find it's a very forgiving platform. It's very flexible. It's easy to get modular pieces together. And there is a lot of cross-curricular approaches um, between what we're doing in the TEJ courses. A lot of this really with this robotics is really First of all, if you find the parts, get the parts somehow in each school. I'm always chasing after the coins and the loonies and the whatever. And then once I get the kits in the schools, then people are going, wow, what a great new program. And I keep saying, it's not a new program. It's been around. I just got to get the right people with the right wallets to pay for the program to get into the schools. And then they love it. So, uh, Brennan, I will say to you, you will be... Um you need to tune in on Tuesday night to the first live. And uh, I think you'll be smiling after that. Um, I wonder if I could go around and ask if you could just briefly uh, tell us what your schedule is like. For example, I'm in a quadmaster right now, as Brennan said earlier, he's doing half a period one or. Yeah, yeah I'm doing a grade 10 
and a grade 11. So my grade 10, uh, I, my end goal will be to do robotics with um, Python using Pyzo, having Python handshaking with little Arduinos using PyFormata. That's my whole bunch of hodgepodge's way of getting kids to do robotics uh, for a cohort class of like say 15 at a time, but 30 kids in that whole class and trying to run it so that at the end of it, they don't have a simulated robot. They're actually, they got a working built mini robot that's simplistic. And then my grade 11 course is, again, I lean on the Arduinos just because that's the main resource that I have right now. And with that, it gives them the fast approach early on for Macs, Chromebooks, and Windows. So I've addressed the platform issue of input, process, output. What you design is not what you're going to get. And the idea of continual perpetual revision, which is what anybody in robotics is doing on FTC, FRC, and um, just sort of tweaking all that sort of stuff. Excellent. Neil, can you share with us your schedule? What, um, what is it a rotating schedule? How many hours a day or days a week do you have a particular class? Just so it, this question is important for me because as we try to create some resources, we want it to be flexible and to be able to be adapted to um, whether you're teaching a whole semester, you're teaching a quad semester, you're rotating, you're not, and what have you. Uh, our school is doing full semesters as we're a private school. The big difference is I have students in eight countries at one time in my classroom through Zoom and in person. So we're both in person and remote at the same time. Wow. And we have uh, 21 students signed up for FRC. Uh, some of them take night class uh, for the FRC club Friday nights at uh, eight o'clock or nine o'clock from Shenzhen. Most of them are taking uh, that from there. And then we have five local students who are from about four countries and they're signed up for the local uh, FRC. <laughs> so we have a small build team and a very large computer programming team that is remote. Uh, so we're doing uh, four month semesters, both uh, semesters this year, uh, ending in April. Wow, that's incredible. Um, so well, I'd really like to... Sorry, John. I just want to clarify. So the kids that you have here in Ontario are doing your build, and then the kids that are said Jin, Jin Zin, is that what you said? Jin, yeah. Jin, Jin, uh, are doing the programming. So far, although we're having our first meeting with the Shenzhen students next week. It's taken us a while to get it all set it up. Uh, wow. set up. And uh, so it's sort of unfolding at last minute because we're just figuring out what the year is looking like. So we may focus a lot on uh, automation of the robot with visual feedback and visual processing. We developed that a lot in ICS for you last year, our own vision processing algorithms. And, and now we just want to get it all together. It's so hard to get that all together on the robot and get it working. Um, so maybe this year we'll have the time. <laughs> well, that, that's great. I, you know, I, I always um, is, uh, have been in the role of department head at different times. I always tried to compel my computer science, computer engineer teachers to take parts of the FRC robot, the sensors, what have you, let them do it as extended learning activities. And those kids bring it back to the classroom and they teach the class. Not only do you teach the class, but you build the capacity for the robotics team at the same time. So mm. sounds like exactly what you're doing. Um, really would like to get a look at some of the, the framework of what that looks like, I, outlines, what have you. I uploaded four of my documents from TEJ and I'm looking through my ICS ones as well because uh, it's a minefield in my folders, but there's some good stuff in there, uh, <laughs> relatively good stuff. <laughs> good. So well, you, last minute. Sorry. you yeah. uploaded where? In the shared folder that you... Okay, great. Nice. Yeah, that's right. Uh, everyone, I actually, when I responded to Neil about the meeting, I sent him the link to the folder already. So uh, that's good. He's, uh, he's earning the Keener badge right off the bat there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Karen, how about you? What's your schedule like? Uh, I, I currently only teach one course. So I teach, um, and we, we are the quad master system. So the, we have the high school students will be taking one class in the morning, lunch with the same teacher, and then moving to a second class in the afternoon. And we have nines and tens will in on site one week and then they're online the other week. So every other week you're on site with the girls. Uh, so it's about a two and a half 
hour class for each course. Um, and so I'm teaching grade 11 computer science right now. Mm. And that next quad I'll be doing the grade 12 computer science. Wow. And that's where I'm thinking of trying to do something with the coding for the robot because those girls will have seen some of the coding and trying to maybe look at doing some vision or sensing with them and using that for, for CPT. So that's what I'm thinking for that course. Outstanding. Um, Matt Alderson, do you know uh, what um, Matt Sabretti or your team has in terms of um, resources that are brought into the school day or his classes? Oh, uh, schedule wise, I know that they're doing um, the same course for 30 days and on Mondays and Wednesdays, one group of students is there and on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the other group of students is there and then Fridays are alternating and the school day for them is uh, three 90 minute sessions broken up by breaks and lunch, I guess, but all the same subject and then they work through that and then they, uh, after 30 days of that, they convert to another session. Wow. Well, thank you for that. That's great. Um, do you know if um, Cipriati is considering coming on here sometime? I encouraged him to, but maybe uh, he's got a conflict or he's, he's uh, drained after, after the first couple of weeks. I know it's been hectic for all the teachers. Oh yeah. We've been so hesitant to uh, reach out to teachers and contact them. Um, wanted to give an opportunity for you to get your feet underneath you a little bit. Um, but we'll see. Um, good. Paul, any questions in that chat box? No, John. People have been talking to each other, but um, there's no specific questions for you, I don't think. Okay. All right. So what, why don't we just open it up with um, anything anybody wants to share? And if we don't have something specific at this point, we could go look at one of those resources that um, are uploaded to that folder. Okay, so I just want to go back for a moment to the question around um, FTC. Um, and those of you that were tied to the summer or not, um, that have in your possession some, some form of curriculum that would uh, allow you to address the curriculum at the same time as do it through the lens of FTC. Okay. Um, so good. So you can see we've got lots of work ahead of us, eh? Uh, it's going to be uh, quite exciting. Dave, do you know um, in your travels with FTC now, has anybody mentioned anything to you about, or here are some really good resources for FTC? Um, no, nobody's really gotten back other than the conversations that we've had already, John, with, uh, with Dan um, and uh, a few others, but nothing, nothing new that I haven't already shared with you. Um, not that I can come up with any. Anyway, okay. Right yeah. All right. Um, but thanks for the nudge there uh, on Dan Monty. Um, so just to explain to everyone again, Dan Monty from Sudbury, um, he's looking at implementing right now into his classroom as much uh, of a robotics course under the FTC program. So he do also does FRC. Um, but what's unique about this for me, I think, is I, I'm hoping that we can develop some resources that will go right back to the hands of the teachers as soon as possible, whether it's uh, FTC, FRC. Um, but if we're going to land on one particular piece of trying to develop over the next um, couple months, it, it would like to begin with the FTC piece. And uh, again, I, I said, uh, as I said at the beginning, Paul and I will be doing that completing that certification and training unit uh, six hour piece that would hopefully be ready in a few weeks. Um, and we're trying to do the best we can at how it would be, uh, be able to be delivered fully remotely and or with some hands-on uh, included in it. But of course, with the COVID scenario in front of us, it's hard to, to get a sense of how many students would you have at one time. So let me ask all of you, you've told us your schedule, so that's great. So Am my understanding right that some of you have 15 students, that's a half a class for X number of hours a day? Yes? I actually can see you all too, so you can even just 
nod your head like that, and then I'll, I get a good response right away. Um, so, and I, I think the more time you have face to face that you can actually look at delivering something um, through the robotics piece, the easier it is to to uh, create and adapt to that certain situation. Um, it seems for me, when I look at a course, so when you look at FRC, it's very hard to put FRC as a complete unit into a single course. You either would need a dual credit or you're really just putting components of FRC into that course. You'd never be able to do the whole course. I do though think that you could do FTC in that uh, way. The question is, we, we have really no starting point other than what uh, Dan Monty is doing and whatever else we can begin to create. And Brendan, did you say you're doing, are, you, you said a lot of stuff about what you're doing, but have you actually focused on any FTC components? Sorry. Um, um, I haven't focused on any FTC components just yet. Um, I've been, as I say, uh, come last year, what I was doing was I found a funny sort of side, side answer to this without eating up everybody's time. I found a side situation that I wasn't fully aware of as I'm still learning how my board operates. My board in Brampton has done a large investment in elementary on the kits, like robot type things for the elementary kids, but Brampton has no high schools. In Mississauga, we have a whole bunch of high schools in the robotics, but the elementary schools seem to be lacking. And so I'm trying, uh, last year I was sort of trying to build my feeder schools to be as a template to say, take say the FTC event, if we can get a field paid for, and toying the idea with the board to say, let's take, say, the FTC event for this year, have a field, have the elementary kids try it, see how they do, then we run our own high school event if I can get enough high schools. This is sort of the vision that I'm trying to work through in the next, say, two to three years. I know my board's big on Ontario skills, and it's kind of funny, it's, it's sort of like, uh, they go, well, why don't we add Ontario skills? And it's sort of chicken and the egg. If my schools don't have a robot kit, how do they virtually show up at Ontario skills to actually do it? The FTC kit is perfect to do Ontario skills with and FTC. So it's, it's a one-time cost that's hitting two places. And I say to all teachers here and anybody that'll listen to me, and I'm a loud person, so I don't shut up very easily. Uh, pound on the director's bulletins every chance you get. Look at what my school has and tone it in a way that almost people read it from other schools and go, why don't we have this parent council? And they start talking to the principals and they start saying to those principals, I thought we had a really good high school too. Why don't we have this? Yeah, points well taken, uh, Brennan. And, you know, the idea of the skills competition and uh, a, a school or a team being able to leverage the FTC robot to compete there is a, a terrific opportunity. And that's kind of like uh, the same thing as when you're looking at SHSMs and certs and training. So it gives another reason to pull that uh, first related program or pieces of it into the school day and allows the teacher to check off key pieces. Um, we have had several discussions with skills, Ontario skills, and we'll be continuing to have more, but you know, with FTC being so relatively new to the province, um, there's a lot more work that needs to be done for sure. So Dave, that, you know, the, um, I'm not sure how aware you are, Dave, of the Ontario skills and Canada skills and the world skills tournaments, but um, Derek himself actually was one of the ones leading that with, uh, I believe also on a Canadian level, Mario from Quebec, um, that are two superstar leads on how they develop and shape that robotics challenge at the Ontario skills level and provincial or Canadian. Yeah, I've seen it at the FLL level, but uh, not in the FTC level. Yeah, so another area where we, we might want to consider focusing too. Um, so it's, it, I'd like to maybe bring it back to 
um, discussions around actual curriculum and maybe more on the FRC basis because that seems to be what the audience is here. Um, with the uh, certification and training, um, I, I guess the other question is, what high skills major do you have at your school? So if you guys could let me know. So Neil, do, does your school give any uh, SHSMs? No. In fact, no. I just found out what that was tonight when people were throwing that acronym around. <laughs> well, I can, uh, I'll be happy to have a sidebar conversation with you to help uh, with that piece because um, it also does uh, initially garners a fair amount of financial support from the provincial government for, for the schools that do that. It would be really helpful and, and uh, I think it would fit into what we're trying to do at the school. Our school was extremely narrowly focused when it started and now has started to expand a lot. And so, uh, yeah, that might be something we could add in. Excellent. It, yeah, really good. Um, yeah, um, the, yeah, lots of uh, possibilities around the FRC and the FTC, how to develop curriculum and how to do it efficiently. Uh, Excellent. Interesting to explore that together. I think there are ways to do it yeah. kind of quickly. Yeah, Brennan, you said ICT. Are there others at your school? I mean, obviously, I could just look on the websites, but yeah, because so, I have. Sorry. Um, yeah. So we have uh, ART, like the art one, and um, so and the ICT. Those are the two that I'm aware of. Um, <laughs> In, in, in our school, they were worried about having too many caveats and too many sort of um, side angles with um, our ICTs. And so I actually had to ironically uh, years ago sort of fight to be part of the ICT schism, even though I feel biased, I guess, as I am, that mine is, mo is one of the most relevant to it. So in our school, we have the radio broadcast communication tech course, which can lead into ICT schism. Uh, we have the programming coding course where kids are, we, we turn it on its head and turn it into gamification. So they're playing around with like game maker and different things uh, to that extent. We had in the past grade 11 kids from the ground up uh, when it came to Java. Um, I've had them when I was teaching that they had to make from the ground up a Space Invaders game of um, multi-threaded application from Java or they make their own little virtual iPod game where they um, they pick different sound bites and different pictures and things. Um, and then uh, we have our media print course on an Apple lab and then my robotics. So it's sort of like four feet into ICT. We had a. Yeah, I, I, I think ICT is a, a very good SHSM that would relate um, quite strongly to robotics, especially um, what I used to, when I was setting up Castlebrook Secondary School and um, Chinkuzi, um, we were looking at uh, SHSMs for both of those schools with the new SciTech at Chinkuzi. And the, the conflict was we were both going to do manufacturing at the beginning. And then we decided to change, leave Chinkuzi as manufacturing, but put Castlebrook as ICT, which would be basically the brains behind um, the, the robotics. So when you think about communications itself, how does anything advanced communication systems and the like. So lots of great ideas that could happen there. Um, so Matt, do you recall, do you have any sense of St. Mary's and what SHSMs they have? Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna use all the proper acronyms because I, I'm not part of the, that world, I apologize. But uh, within the Hamilton Catholic Board, the SHSMs are um, kind of distributed amongst the schools. And I know that there uh, is one in healthcare, one in advanced manufacturing, and ours, the opening that we had originally was in energy, and we had to kind of adapt the robotics stuff we were doing to suit the energy uh, side of things. But since then, we've got them to call it robotics, and that's now offered it at two of the schools. So if that all makes sense. That's what I well, know sure. of it. Yeah. Um, but it's not nearly as structured as what I'm hearing from, from some of you guys, which it's, it sounds awesome. That seems like we've got a lot to learn. Well, you know, the, the thing is, we've mentioned um, Ontario skills, and we've talked about 
uh, as a way to connect the robotics than SHSMs. And what's unique about Ontario Skills is um, they actually are identified within SHSMs as one of the checkoffs. And you would think that first it should be a checkoff in, in there is uh, some type of experience, reach ahead opportunity or job shadowing. So what I would like to see is that, um, well, in the other piece about SHSMs is uh, a year ago, the ministry added a new element to every single SHSM. It doesn't matter whether it's art, business, phys ed, uh, manufacturing, what have you, but it's the idea of <clears throat> some type of coding element that goes with that SHSM. So obviously uh, the you know volume of coding that we have in FIRST Robotics, and even though it's a robot, but it's still an automated system, right? it's still some type of calculation that occurs. So I think that there's room for us to build resources that teachers in almost every subject area would be able to benefit from. Okay. So, um, I want this to be as meaningful to each one of you as, as possible. Can we just go around and, and get a sense of what would you want to get the most out of from an evening like this and other evenings going forward? And we'll start with William, who's on the screen now. Uh, hello. Uh, well, it's really been great to even learn a lot about what's going on out there uh, from everyone. And uh, despite the pandemic, everyone's going well. Uh, I think uh, one of the things that's most interesting to me is exploring uh, different definitions of education that are more complete and integrated. And the FRC is the closest that I found in the Ontario system to what I would call education uh, because it has this integrated interdisciplinary approach. What we have in our whole society is very fragmented. So I uh, experimented through the FRC with interdisciplinary activities in classes. And so when the teachers come into my classroom, it, some of them just turn around and run away because it's a little bit scary. Uh, but it's because my students taught me how to do these things. I didn't do any of it, actually. The students have gone out there, learned it, and taught each other how to do it. And it allowed us to do far more than if we're waiting for the bottleneck, which is the teacher to lecture it from the front of the class. So I speak for about five minutes at the start of each class just to set the tone and say, OK, go and learn all this stuff. And in two days, you're going to present it to us. And thereby, we can learn five or six things at once rather than, and everyone's learning at their own pace also. And so I'm really interested in seeing how we can take that approach. And for example, that could be done within the FTC. Let's roll out some FTC curriculum and let the students help roll it out. They generate Google documents collaboratively from year to year. They improve upon them. And then the resources are generated organically rather than prepared in advance and then sort of brought to the students and through all their different learning paces, getting on with the mess of all kinds of different outcomes. Whereas with the students, when they are doing an interdisciplinary sort of thing, they focus on one thing, they present on it, but then based on all the presentations of the students, that's what we're gonna test them on. So there's a balance there. They specialize in one area, but they're responsible for the basic ideas of all the areas. And uh, yeah. so I'm really like, happy to try to explore that through FRC, FTC, or any other courses that everyone's doing. Excellent. Well, William, how much of, um, do you have uh, parts of your courses uh, are online? Uh, as you say, you have students across the system internationally. Um, do you use Google Classroom or what formats do you use? It, it's very interesting because of China, we use, if I have all students who are outside of China, I can use Google Documents. I don't use Google Classroom, but I use Google Documents. But if I have students in China, well, we had to set up a Moodle server hosted in China so that the Great Firewall doesn't block it. And then we're actually hosting that for our whole worldwide uh, student base. And so then we, we use Moodle plus Zoom in China, but Google plus Moodle plus Zoom outside of China. Wow, so interesting. Very strategic too. <laughs> and how, how you're able to- so there's a oh. few ICS uh, check marks uh, there about firewalls and things. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I had the fortune of being in China about seven years ago, eight years ago, and yeah. uh, I tried. I had my FRC kids here uh -huh. teach my class in China, but as you know, it's 12 hours difference. So oh, it's yeah. a real 
tough though to get the, uh, I, I'm trying to remember the um, media format that we use because of how everything is blocked in China. <laughs> Ouch, it's, it's yeah. tricky. Getting harder too. Yeah. So we're Interesting. Um, you mentioned the interdisciplinary. So there are a couple of people on the call that may not understand um, interdisciplinary or IDC mm. courses, but they really do lend themselves to um, delivering a program like FIRST Robotics, uh, FRC, uh, for sure, the FTC piece, because it allows you to bring in all the other components as parts of that course, whether it's the business and the um, the English, any of the other subject areas. So it really allows you that very full, rich um, capturing of everything that's on an FRC team, the awards, the piece behind the chairman's piece, the outreach piece, everything all put into one. Whereas, as I said earlier, it's way too difficult to try to run FRC as a, uh, in a single class. Although I will say there was a private school near where Paul lives, Markham area, Mm -hmm. um, at one of the hockey rinks. So it was a private school in a hockey rink for elite athletes. And they ran the full FRC team through their leadership class, mm. the grade 12 leadership class. So really creative thinking there. That's excellent. <laughs> yeah. Um, do, is any, uh, Brendan, um, do you have any, how much, or do you have any experience at all with uh, uploading, having as much remote or Google Classroom? With your students um so um what i'm doing like so did discord then i found that was good like say on the summer that actually uh, i found that was pretty stable uh our boards were getting scared about uh this whole thing on zoom but i found zoom was actually pretty good uh as i say i hope uh, nobody here is sponsored by microsoft i didn't find ms teams was uh, very friendly um, my, my class itself, uh, I'm actually running Brightspace, not because it's necessarily the best thing, but um, the biggest headache that I have right now is figuring out this wonderful world of attendance. Um, as I say, it's the, the delivery of my content right now is a little bit challenging. I've always sort of wrappered the concepts of what the curriculum wants into project-based which is how our kids get what's going on rather than just sort of throw them out a whole bunch of theory. And I guess I sort of almost reverse engineer the curriculum in the province of Ontario and say this, this, and this will hit a robot that I have them build. This, this, and this will get a circuit that they can build. And my courses are very tactile hands-on. I guess I'd get more upset with a kid who is too scared to try anything rather than a kid that tries something uh, they do some logical things and they fry down a circuit. Like, like, like we got to We, this generation, I feel we're pushing them to sort of say, it's more than just texting on a cell phone. We got, we got, we got to bring back the innovators of, uh, of the past into this generation. Um, and, 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 uh, one thing I was just putting here on the chat is, uh, the province of Ontario is is in the process of, for I don't know why, but rewriting coding uh, courses as well as um, the um, computer engineering technology classes. And just again, trying to see if uh, through that process, is there other ways to sort of push in um, robotics agenda into that as they're having these discussions with the MOE. Okay. Um, Karen, a question to you and then back to everybody else. If you could get your hands on one curricular resource that would help you um, and implement it, what would that be? What would be the area of focus with that resource? Um, and what would it look like in the, how you would deliver it? Um, so, well, my high school is quite small and I to offer like a full FRC course or something that's centered around it, I have to be careful because it's all it's a fine line that I need to be make it of interest to the girls and to make it relevant for them um, I uh, I would like to see maybe the computer science developing it some applications so some uh, lessons or projects that I could implement in there um, possibly the physics and down the road, maybe an IDC, but we have to be careful if, I, if we do implement that type of course. I mean, my computer science class is only six kids and my physics in grade 12, it, 
grade 11 is about 15, grade 12 is about six. So you, you can't stretch the, the population of, that I have that much. So more so now I would think it'd be integrating parts of robotics into the courses mm -hmm. that are there right now. And that's how I would want to start developing it and integrating it. Right, so for the sake of um, creating a pool of resources for you, um, it would make a lot of sense to be able to kind of like go to a salad bar of resources and yeah. pick some of this, some of that to be able to address certain things that you want to deliver in okay. any of those courses. Yeah. Yeah, good. Um, um, Mike, how about you? I think Mike is muted. Is that better? Yep, there you go. Uh, in terms of resources, I'd love to see some skill building lessons. So ways that focus on fundamental skills and developing them forward. Like starting from very bare bones. A lot of the students that we have coming in uh, have no background in robotics whatsoever. Like there's no Lego in this area, no FTC, anything like that. So introductory stuff like how to connect pieces, um, how to think through assembling a drivetrain, and, and little step-by-step -step pieces for every aspect of a fundamental robot would be the best tool for me. So it, singular activities, uh, there could be multiples in a row that um, somebody who's maybe joined the class late could come in and, and start to work on these pieces individual with everyone else or independent of everyone else, but they all still, after you do so many, you're gonna be caught back up or where you would want the whole class to be and or in preparation for the team, a certain um, progress with the team there. Um, so it's basically chunking uh, components or individual activities, basically. All right. I think, uh, that was one of the things that Bob Cherry was saying about um, what he was doing it when he was still teaching his robotics classes at St. Robert. He had uh, work tasks, that he called them that were developed mm -hmm. long before he started in different subject areas in tech. So that every kid in the classes are in pairs or doing something different on this work task that they have to submit by a certain time. Some of them are smaller than others. Some of them take twice as long, but they all go through a certain number of work tasks. Sounds like what Mike is talking about. Exactly. And uh, if I knew how to show my screen, if I was to go to a website, can um, I could show uh, that work by Bob Cherry now. Um, is there a way for me to do that, Dave or Paul? Like, you yeah. know, bring, my... bring up the page you want on your web browser, John, and then just hit the share screen button at the bottom. Okay. Um, I'm going to go right back to that document then. There's such anticipation building right now, eh, Dave? Right. Oh, yeah. No kidding. Everybody, everybody's leaning in. <laughs> the speed is closer. I can see it. The speed is killer. Okay, now I just got to share this screen again, right? I'm, I'm there. Believe me. Um, share screen. Pick out of all the options that come up. You have to pick the screen that you brought up. You well, here it is. Screen. Check it out. There you go. Yeah. So again, this is, um, it looks uh, kind of empty. Well, uh, I will click on the, the tabs there, but Bob is a, uh, well, um, he's near retirement almost. Um, but he's done an extensive amount of work with robotics. So this is just a home in the home site that he shared with me. Um, and then, you know, he's got his electrical theory, and again, when you, you start to talk about chunking pieces out, so it's all threaded with first stuff in here. Um, so it'd be great as a, you know, introductory to electrical theory uh, for whoever would want that as part of their course, right? Um, and then obviously all the important links and what have you. So I, I guess this is Bob taking his work and making it electronic and accessible anywhere, anytime for the student, and then allows them to be caught up or to um, study different areas that they uh, um, like. I thought that was saying 1241. That's why I went back to it, but I digress there. 
Um, so yeah, interesting. Um, let's see what this one is, drivetrain design. So he has this in there. So obviously using some BEX elements. So what, what I would like to see is us developing resources um, that is the FTC robot instead of um, the VEX. VEX does do a, a really good job for those of you that know VEX, um, have a, a very good curriculum binder. It's all electronic that is available um, when you buy your kits or you buy that package from the States, but it's not Ontario friendly as far as meeting the expectations, right? So you'd have to do some work around that or just chunk out pieces that work for you, but lots of good material here. And on and on. So if I go back up to the top, so he's done a lot of work obviously to bring this uh, format forward. Um, I can't. John, this is his own Google site? Yes, exactly. So unfortunately the um, screen sharing bar is on top of all the other categories. I can't get to it, but there's a, just an example, right? Um, which Paul was talking to earlier. Um, if I go back to, I'm going to try to go. If you make your web browser not full screen, John, you should be able to move it. So it's not impacted by the share bar. Yeah, I makes sense. Um, I'm going to try to get to another one. Um, well, even uh, this whole idea, you guys can still see what I, I'm scrolling through fasteners. Yeah. Okay. So again, um, introductory stuff for robotics. So um, Mike, you were asking about some basic um, elements to teach the kids. And again, a, a whole array. There's also uploaded to this folder um, that you all have access to or will have access. Um, did a lot of work with the TDSP last couple of years on safety orientation in a robotics learning environment. And it's a, a very good, very long, 60 slide long um, PowerPoint that really addresses safety from all the key equipment we'd have in a robotics lab or a machine shop, basically, uh, and some information around um, the operation of them. Uh, let me go back to this document. I want to go for a second to Octi. So I'm looking at the Octi screen. Do I need to go back now and pick that under sharing? Or can you guys see the Opti screen? Yep, we're there. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. All right, so again, uh, I'm not trying to promote Opti. It's, it's more that they have a ton of great resources here. So you see the online. So uh, an example on that online, they just develop resources to deliver virtual co-op, which we know a lot of schools are struggling with now, right? So that was this uh, past spring and summer that they developed this stuff. But what I wanna do is let's go to secondary. And let's just pick ToolSafe, for example. And I wanna show you how rich these resources are. So let's go through and um, I'm gonna pick um, something to do with a robotics manufacturing shop, like um, the milling machine. So if you're fortunate to have access to, to this type of equipment, but you've got the a video, you've got your, um, very good lesson plan. Let's just click on that. Let me just see, come on. Can you see the lesson plan now? No. No, talk on it. Uh, anyway, you gotta believe me, it's, it's good. Uh, I need to practice this more. I should have taken that production training, Dave. The, you click on, if you, you unshare, click on you share back your whole computer desktop, you should get it. Yeah. Resume share. Oh, share and then reshare. Um, pause share, new share. Oh. Well, you, you did see this already, yes? We're seeing the Octa right now. 
Yeah, you have to stop share. Or or new share. Either one. And now new share yeah, share screen. Sure. Okay. And whole desktop. Yeah. I thought it was helping you guys tonight, but you're helping me. Oh, I got it. Here we go. So here's an example. You can see the lesson plan now? Yep. yep. All right. So very detailed. Tons of good information. Uh, definitely connected to all the right groups um, in terms of the, the links. Uh, obviously, it's going to meet the ministry. It's been, this is one of the ones that's vetted by the ministry. But when you start to look at all of the key pieces in here, and then we get to the actual lessons. So lesson preparation, everything from IEP, look for us, blah, 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 to all the steps on how to go through uh, the, the machine, setting up the machine, machining sides one, two, three, four, um, as some of us would know, it's difficult for kids to understand. So very, very thorough. So Octi paid for this stuff to get written. So very, very good. Um, I'm going to just take this moment unless somebody wants to go somewhere else, but I'm going to show for William. I want you to see um, if I could get to the... Um, Oh, I see all this stuff here, William, your uh, TEJ4M. So why don't we load up one of those and let you just lesson plan. Okay, let me see. Any comments you guys while I'm looking at this stuff here? Can I get yes, it? Yes, I have faith in you, John. You're, you're a good guy. I just want to show um, the other thing I would say about Bob's stuff is one of the things he did do. Um, he got frustrated with the kids in FRC with their coding. They took so long to code the robot. So he's, he, had, he went and learned how to do it himself so he could see if they were blowing smoke. And um, he put a little booklet on how to do it in Java, how to, code the robot so you know a little bit about it because he, he thought that the mentor should know a little bit about everything. Um, so, so that was important. And then what he did was he, in addition to those lessons, which we didn't see the end of them, but there was a task in each one of those. He actually made videos of how to do all this stuff on the robot. So it was, it was, he was certainly ahead of his time and that kind of stuff. Okay, I've got something to share with you. Um, I'm gonna share and then reshare, I guess. Um, okay, can you see that? Oh, jeez, John. Where'd it go? So I, I've got a question. Is this the stuff that you're talking about from Bob or, or the Octi stuff, is that generally available is there are there any passwords or any special no, things we have to do we open gonna, source yeah yeah because it's interesting i was um, in the last couple of months i've been having correspondence with a couple of frc teams in california who are doing uh i think they call it google classroom and they've yes. got a whole series of resources some similar to what you're showing here of course it's not particular to ontario but it's a gathering of all that important information and lesson plans they even do, I guess, in their situation, they're able to do um, marking, grading, testing, and so on using all the online resources. So I've been, we've been contributing to their efforts, but this seems like it's a lot more closer to home and a lot more suited to what we're allowed to do or what would be accepted in the Ontario system. Absolutely. Uh, can I ask what you're seeing on the screen now? That's First outline 2011, 2012 from Mechanical. Okay, great. So this is an example of a mechanical engineering course, but really it's manufacturing robotics is what it is. And this was just me evolving the robotics course to capture um, a wider variety of students in the class. But when you look at all of these um, areas, like the units one, two, and three, 
um, safety, the project management piece here with project engineering. So this is, this was probably the most successful course that I ran in the school. And when you just start to look at all the, the activities here in unit three and how detailed that that is and how it would very much fit an FRC course, for example, or it could be whittled down to a, to a degree where it's less intense and be um, fit the realm of uh, FTC, for example, all the way through CNC, what have you. And some areas that are not as exciting like quality control. So this is the kind of material that you're going to see up in that folder. And then, of course, everything else here as far as the assessment and evaluation um, of what's in there. So, okay. Any comments and questions at this time while I muddle around on this piece here? So, if not, I'm going to try to share this with you. Can you see? I guess I have to pick it again. Eh? It's a new share. Okay, I'm getting a string of it now. You guys can see this? Yes. So the, the safety course, um, again, um, based with a lot of the equipment. So obviously it's got some funny stuff here at the beginning, some crazy safety things. And then it goes into, and, and this really was actually made for uh, teachers. So this was, a, I delivered this at Humber College in partnership with Humber and the TDSB to build that um, capacity in the teachers to be able to be in the robotics space. So if we look at that in a little bit more indirectly, but important is that there are some teachers that some school boards were, unless you're a technology teacher, you can't be in the shop. So this kind of broached that or, or broke, you know, kind of reduced that gap a bit where the school board was more willing to allow the teachers in there if they took this course. And it was a certificate granting course, um, a two day course. <clears throat> but again, these are all basic things for some of you. I, I realize that, but what's important is it's very comprehensive. And again, it'll really identify everything that goes back to robotics, um, like a high end robotics uh, lab, I guess you could say. So all the basic introduction to the tools, the hand tools, um, hand cutting tools, power tools, and then right up through the, um, each individual piece of equipment all the way through. So, very, very good resource, and uh, it's 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 up to date also. So you, and then again, these are all the hyperlinks to key videos that would support all those pieces. So you can really see where the FRC piece is, right? And of course, it even pulls in the first safety manual here. So one of the the great, very good resources that are in there. The other thing too is um, uh, when you go in and look at and William, in reference to you and what you were um, asking about. The TMR course that's uploaded to that folder that has, have a look at that. It's, I apologize, it's long. It's like uh, 80 or 120 pages long. But it, it, what it does is it has every uh, IAS or instructional aid sheet with it. It's got quizzes and tests um, for every single type of equipment that's involved in that course. Um, and anything to do with control systems is in red ink. So that whole focus of a robotics uh, flavor that's in there. Yeah, Karen, in that folder is also the um, physics IDC course and the, the uh, final assessment evaluation that that teacher used. And um, I'm also, maybe one of the other things would be good is to, you know, this should evolve into a, a curriculum Slack group, I guess, of, of an idea and start to pull in those other people that you hear me talking about. So it's not just me saying something. Um, who is that teacher in Windsor that uh, taught a, um, SNC 2R course, a robotics grade 10 science course. Um, who's doing the grade nine uh, robotics course? And what does that look like? Because uh, I love that idea, but it was a bit of a surprise to me. You know, how do you address all the broad based areas in grade nine if you're doing a robotics course, right? So it really does lend itself to being creative. And one of the things I've heard from administrators is, what do you have that I can give my teachers so they can just deliver the grade nine course? 
And especially when you talk about this new remote uh, learning environment that's out there today. Any uh, comments or questions at this time? I think one of the um, next steps is, is going to be, uh, I'll sit with Dave and Paul and talk more about um, what are the next steps that we want to t take to try to build on the FTC piece, um, but also keep the FRC piece going too. So maybe what we could do is look at future sessions where maybe we alternate one's FTC, one's FRC, or we just split it. We have a two hour session and one hour is uh, FTC and one hour is uh, FRC. But the goal is that whatever we're spending efforts creating is going to be useful to teachers like yourself and mentors that um, it, it's, it's not just about the teaching, right? It's about the mentoring too. So a lot of those resources, teams, team members that come in for your robotics team could go learn about how to run the lathe and understand the safety behind the lathe from those Octi videos. It's, here's a question. Um, one thing that I did ask here, as I say in all my chat, are hopefully being helpful. Um, I know VEX is talking about this year and their competition of doing some sort of online virtual simulator, and I have no idea what the wrapping of that is. Do you know what FRC or FTC is looking at as their interpretation of the competition this year? Uh, yes, and I'm going to let Dave speak to that, but we not only do we have okay. information on that, we've got information about the virtual uh, robot piece too. So go ahead, Dave. Great question. Um, do you want me to just talk about FTC and you want to cover FRC, John? Or? Sure. Yeah. So I wrote it in the chat earlier uh, in response, uh, Brendan, but there's been lots of chats, so you probably missed it. But um, for FTC, we're doing um, judging. So they're going to be remote events. So each region can pick their either doing remote or in-person events. In-person events would be the same as normal, um, but obviously restricted number of people probably, and also um, restrictions in terms of um, you know, contact and face masks and all that kind of stuff. Um, in Ontario, we chose to go with uh, remote events because um, that was the other option, um, figuring that probably during the time frame that we're going to be running events, our numbers are going to be pretty bad anyway, and people aren't going to be wanting to come to a physical event. Um, so we've chosen to go remote. Uh, remote events uh, have a component of judging just like they would in, in person, but it's done through Zoom like this. Um, we did a pilot of that with First Lego League in June but where we had eight FLL teams come in and, and uh, we did Zoom judging with them as well. Um, and it worked really, really well, actually. Um, there's definitely some uh, differences, especially for First Lego League, where they're typically very creative presentations and, and you know, they're in costumes and doing kinds of things uh, that you wouldn't necessarily see with FRC and FTC, but um, but they still got creative with, you know, like virtual backgrounds and they were handing things to each other through the camera and, and that kind of stuff. So that was kind of, that was kind of well done. Um, and I think that would develop over time with them. Um, so the judging is going to be done through uh, Zoom. The robot games are going to be done um, at your own location, and then you would upload your scores to a um, scoring server that first has for it. Um, so that's the plan for that aspect of it. And that'll be like a, a week long event. So we'll probably open up judging. Sorry, my kids are playing piano. Um, you, uh, we're going to open up judging probably Monday uh, for the first round of judging. And then Tuesday night, the judges will probably get together and do kind of an initial deliberation. And then Wednesday, they would have um, a second round of judging, which is replacing kind of the pit visits that you would normally get in FTC and FRC. And then um, we'll use Thursday for judge final judge deliberation award selection. Um, during that window of time is when you would also be submitting your robot scores. With First Lego League, they are um, requiring teams to submit video footage that the refs are actually going to score. Um, for FTC, for reasons unbeknownst to me, um, they decided not to go with that option. So teams are uploading their scores to the server um, on a kind of um, honor system, um, the, which I think is fine. Uh, it takes our refs out of, the, out of the mix in terms of volunteer roles and stuff like that though. But what we're hoping our teams will do is send us videos anyway of their team um, 
running the robot in, the, in an actual match format so that um, we can then use that footage in the, um, in the event that we're going to put together. So on the Saturday, we're going to take all that footage of the, the judging and the um, robot games and all that stuff, and we're going to put it into a, you know, there'll be an opening ceremony on Saturday where we're introducing the teams and the refs and the judges and all that kind of stuff, and then running a, a, a series of matches where we're showing the recordings of all the teams with the uh, refs and, and game announcers commentating on it, and then um, finishing up with the closing ceremonies where we will announce the award winners. Um, and so that's what the that's what the week looks like. It'll kind of start on the Monday, and we'll wrap it up on the Saturday. And Dave, if there if the COVID situation gets better um, in the spring, um, would there be a chance to have a like a year-ending culminating championship that could be face to face? Yeah. Our, our, so our goal for the provincial championships. So last year. Um, for FTC, it was our first year. We had 30 some odd teams, and so we held one championship event, and that was it. This year, our plan was to um, set it up similar to our first leg league program, where we have qualifying tournaments throughout the, the it was supposed to be the fall, and then at provincial championships in January, but we bumped that season so that the qualifiers are going to be in February and uh, remote. And then the hope is that we'll have a face to face maybe in April or May uh, as our provincial championships. So we'll see what, what that looks like. If it doesn't end up being face-to-face -face because of COVID numbers, then we can still run a, a remote provincial championships the same way we ran the qualifiers. Mm -hmm. So as far as uh, the other programs go, um, everything through FTC, um, from FLL, FTC, is 100% remote. And the FRC is, we don't know yet, uh, but they've created um, three or four really cool challenges from the headquarters perspective, in addition to First Canada having its own challenges that are gonna be released this week. Uh, on October 6th, you'll hear a lot of details about that and keep in mind, you don't wanna miss October 6th meeting for a lot of other good reasons. Um, FRC, how many of you, just put your hand up if you saw the uh, announcement last week on the 24th from headquarters. Okay, so everybody has. Uh, William, you didn't see it, eh? So unfortunately um, for you, you'll see in the notes there that I send back out afterwards, there will be the FAQ link that goes back to our, our website that gives the, um, each time we have a meeting like this, or the next Tuesday, sorry, next Thursday is also the mentor meeting. So it's just mentor discussion about anything, mm -hmm. um, no particular topic, um, and we keep, are archiving all the questions that are asked and what those answers are. But that announcement last week um, was a pretty big announcement. Basically, uh, we would prefer if you interpreted the announcement this way. Headquarters has created this window of more time where you don't have to, you have more time to think about what you're doing and to plan ahead. Octo October 6th is also open registration for FRC teams. Oh. And I did see that. Yeah. All that means, yeah, is you can go in, get your dashboard going, clean up a few things, get things started, which is really important to do. And we will let you know soon when the payment timeline is, which really means you're not committed to anything at all. Like you're not like, oh, we have to be in the season. Some teachers are concerned right now that if I bug my admin to pay for a registration fee, um, that, that that's not going to be good chemistry at this time. So we're trying to give as much time as possible. Uh, the encouragement is to get in for all of these reasons, right? And when you talk about uh, the challenges, so you, you have to be a registered team to be in the judged awards. Many of those awards are also linked to the new challenges that they have. So you have to be in there for that. Some of those challenges are at home challenges that each individual student could participate in. So a lot of engagement overall and a, lot of, a very good way to keep your kids involved, regardless of what the scenario in your school is like. So all of those details are, are coming out over the next week. Um, headquarters I know sent, um, just sent this morning, I believe, the details of all of those challenges in clear cut details. So they're very exciting. They're way better than I thought they were gonna be. Uh, by the way. And then for us, there are going to be no decisions about events uh, until the summer near the end of January. So to me, that's a bit of a positive window, right? So we've got all this time to get organized, to do all these other things. 
all of our events are scheduled as they were in the past, like last year. Um, those dates are still confirmed and that information though doesn't get posted until headquarters says we have the okay to go ahead in January. And it, it is possible that the season can now run right up into the end of June. So, you know, as educators, you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, what about final exams and all that? Well, we're smart enough to make sure we stay away from the critical time that where you'd have the exam or the AP assessments and what have you. Um, that said, uh, world championship would occur in August for um, uh, teams from Ontario to go to that one. How you would qualify, we don't know, but as soon as we know, we're going to pass that information out to you. So we are already at 8.30 and um, I do have a lot of good notes taken here um, from what you have said. Um, I have a sense of what the needs are out there, but just to honor your time in joining us tonight, um, I'm happy to stand a couple minutes longer if there's any questions you have about anything to do with uh, first. Um, this weekend is 2056 Inspires. I'll be doing the first update on Sunday at 1230. And then Tuesday is the fantastic first live. And a lot of good key segments in there with the final um, segment. There's a blast that went out on social media today. Did you see it? It's got the big banner across. Major announcement. So if that's a, not a teaser, I don't know what it is. So. So that's quite good. Well, again, thanks very much, everybody. Appreciate it. Um, I will, when, as soon as we're done now, I'm going to send out to you. Um, Karen, I don't know if I have your email. So if you all could email me right after this, I'll just fire back with the, the agenda piece that's got all those hyperlinks in it and the access to the actual curriculum folder. All right. Thanks very much, everybody. Take care. Bye now. See you Tuesday, everybody. Woohoo. 7 p.m. Thanks. Excellent. Thanks, Paul, for uh, that co-piloting there. Appreciate it as always.